I am uh, not so impressed with your male perspective. Shopping for 15 minutes, making love for seven. <laughs> You'll be worried about that. <laughs> but we're not talking about making love, unfortunately. We're talking about fear. And uh, it's quite a difficult topic because how many of us are brave enough to admit that we're afraid sometimes? And we, we let fear hold us back in life. Tonight I'm going to share a story with you about how I went from being a very afraid child to a courageous adult. Imagine me, I'm six years old. I'm hanging upside down at the trapeze bar of the swings at school. So you know those monkey bar things? I've got my legs safely placed over the bar and my hands are holding on either side of my knees. And I'm up quite high. There's all these children beneath me. All I have to do is let go of my hands. And I can swing like a little monkey like everybody else. But I can't do it. I'm terrified. My knuckles grow whiter and I hold on tighter. And the kids are taunting me. They're saying, chicken! Chicken! <laughs> Defeated, I slowly unravel my legs and I get back down. <coughs> I've always been a chicken. I was afraid of the dark. I was afraid someone near me might die. And I was afraid of being kidnapped in the night. I'm going to be cruel here and say, it was all that woman's fault, my mother. <laughs> Now I know this not to be entirely true, but her constant supervision and cries of, oh Santa, be careful, followed me everywhere I went. She was afraid, and so I was afraid. I was even afraid of making decisions in case I made the wrong one. And my indecisiveness drove me and those around me absolutely crazy. My life changed completely. When at the tender young age of 37, I discovered I had breast cancer. Now to say that I was afraid is a complete understatement. I was absolutely terrified. But apart from being afraid for myself, I was worried about how everybody would handle it, particularly my family. And yet, no one fell apart completely, not even my mother. And in fact, to this day, she remains a pillar of strength throughout my journey. And let me tell you, it has been a long and arduous journey. After having my left breast removed, I made a brave decision to get rid of the healthy right breast as well and have a reconstruction, which looks pretty cool, by the way. <laughs> I always say, I can still have an affair, I just have to leave the bra on. <laughs> I'll be more than seven minutes too. <laughs> take off my right healthy breast didn't come lightly, but I didn't stress over it like I normally would. I just did the research and decided that this would be for the best. It was starting to signal the beginning of a change in me because I was having the courage to make decisions. After my cancer experience, though, my fear continued. What if the cancer comes back? What am I going to do? What if the cancer comes back? I wanted to be a professional speaker, but I was too afraid to move forwards. Well, sadly, it has come back. And I stand before you with metastatic bone and liver cancer, quite advanced. And yet, I move forwards because I realise that despite everything, I'm still here. Yes, you are. And that somehow, as Whitney said, you get through what life dishes out to you. So as I said in the beginning, how many of you find that fear holds you back? Because I see it all the time. People in jobs I hate, you know, <laughs> And people in bad relationships because better the devil you know, they say. It is a well-known saying that most people would rather die than speak in public, for instance. Why I'd love to test that theory. <laughs> I'd set up a room, an electric chair in one corner, pony in the other, and watch them all cross to the podium. <laughs> but seriously though, how do you get past your fear? How did I get past it? Well, there is an excellent book by Susan Jeffers called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Has anyone read this book? Yeah. And she says that at the basis of all our fears is just the one fear that we think we're not going to be able to handle what comes our way. Take my sister, for instance. Unhappy marriage for 10 years. The last five most miserable. 
I said, Maria, why don't you leave your marriage? She said, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle living alone. She has since left that marriage, is happy living alone, and in fact, is really enjoying it. And look at me. Who would have thought that I'd be here tonight? My friends thought I was crazy. They said, are you still going to Sydney? Aren't you really sick? I said, bloody oath I am. <laughs> because I want to be there, and it's a goal. And what is the worst thing that can happen here? I'll perform badly. Boom! <laughs> or I won't perform at all. Not a big deal either. In fact, I have colleagues that step in in case I can't make um, a keynote. And I haven't had to do that before. But the option is there. And I'm sure it wouldn't be such a big deal if I had to do that. So my one tip for getting through your fear, because I can only give you one to know, I've only got seven minutes. If you want to make a change or get through a fearful situation, ask yourself, what is the worst thing that can happen here? And tell yourself, I'll handle it, because you will. I have learned that the human spirit is so resilient. Our very instinct is to keep going. We cannot escape fear, and yet we can realise that we are capable of doing much more than we think we can do. My mother said to me the other day, you know what I said though, for such a scared child, you have become such a brave lady. Wow. Feel the fear. You wrap your hands around that trapeze bar and then let go and experience the freedom of flying through the air. Turn your fear into fire and achieve all that you want in 